In this video, you will learn to use a new circuit part called a potentiometer, along with the Arduino's analog inputs and the analog read command, to control the brightness of an LED. Let's forget about the LED for a minute and just talk about the potentiometer. A potentiometer is a type of variable resistor. You are probably used to using fixed resistors like this one that just have two legs and have a fixed resistance value. A potentiometer has three pins. The resistance between the two outer pins is fixed, but the resistance between both of the outer pins and the middle pin changes when you turn this knob. So, you can put the potentiometer in the breadboard, connect its two outer pins to ground and 5 volts from the Arduino, and then when you turn the knob, the voltage on the middle pin will change. This forms a circuit called a voltage divider, because it can take the 5 volts and divide it, or decrease it, into some lower voltage. So turning the knob gives you a continuously variable voltage between 0 and 5 volts on that middle pin. However, the Arduino's digital pins can only tell if a voltage is high or low. They can't measure anything in between. To do that, we need to use the Arduino's analog input pins. Let's switch over to Tinkercad and take a look at how to build this circuit. If you are not familiar with Tinkercad or how to use a breadboard, make sure you check out the previous videos in this series. So we are going to make use of the breadboard's power buses here. I have those connected to the Arduino's 5 volt and ground pins. Note that there are three ground pins, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. And then we have our potentiometer. So you don't need to worry if your physical potentiometer does not look exactly like this one in Tinkercad. The main point is that it has three pins and you are going to want to place those in the breadboard and make sure they are in three different rows. Remember how a breadboard works. If you put the potentiometer in the breadboard like this, then all of the holes in that row are connected, so all of the pins on the potentiometer are short-circuited together. So make sure you rotate it so all three pins are in different rows. Then you are going to connect the two outer pins to 5 volts and ground. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. If you flip it around, that's just going to reverse the clockwise and counterclockwise behavior of the knob. And finally, you are going to connect the middle pin to one of the Arduino's analog input pins. Again, so far we have been using the digital pins, which can only be on or off. The analog pins can measure that continuously changing voltage between 0 and 5 volts. So if you haven't already, pause the video here and build this circuit on your breadboard. Now we are going to switch over to the Arduino IDE and just run an example program. Open the IDE, then select File, Examples, Basics, Analog Read Serial. This will open the program that we're going to use to read the value on the analog pin. Let's take a quick look at this program and talk about how it works. Inside the setup function, we have the serial.begin command. This is something that is going to let the Arduino print out numbers to the computer screen using something called the serial monitor once the program has been uploaded. We'll show how that works in a little bit. Note that you do not need to declare the analog pin as an input in the setup function like you would with a digital pin. Then down here in the loop function, we declare a variable called sensor value and use the analog read command to read the value on the pin and assign it to this variable. Note one small difference here, this is a local variable because it is declared inside a function instead of a global variable that you have seen in other example programs that is declared up at the top of the program. For now, you don't need to worry about the difference between those too much, but basically a local variable is only accessible or used inside this function. Other functions don't know that this variable exists, there's some advantages to doing that, but again, we're actually not going to worry about that too much right now. So go ahead and upload this program to your Arduino, and then once it's uploaded, open the Serial Monitor, which you can do two different ways. You can go up to Tools, Serial Monitor, or you can click this little magnifying glass icon up here in the upper right. That will open this window at the bottom where you will see the analog pin reading continuously printing out. And if you go ahead and turn the potentiometer, you will see that it goes all the way between a value of zero at the minimum, and the maximum is a value of 1,023, which you might find strange because you might think, wait, the Arduino goes between zero and five volts. Why isn't this number just going between zero and five? That happens because the Arduino has something called an analog to digital converter. So it is taking that voltage between zero and five volts 
and converting it to a digital number that the computer can work with, which happens to be between 0 and 1023, because it is a 10-bit binary number. So don't worry if you don't know how binary numbers work. Long story short, 1023 is the highest you can count with a 10-bit or 10-digit binary number if you start counting at 0. If we want to see what the actual voltage is, we need to add another variable and do some math to convert it from that 0 to 1023 range to a 0 to 5 range. So here is the equation to do that. And we are also going to declare that variable as a new type called a float, which basically means that that variable can have decimal places, unlike the int variable type, which will chop off any decimal places and just give you an integer. So you can see now down here in my serial monitor, I have two different numbers printing out. I have the analog to digital converter reading, which is between 0 and 10, 1023. And then I have the actual analog voltage, which is between 0 and 5. So when the ADC reading is at its maximum of 1023, the voltage is at its maximum of 5. And then if I turn that all the way down, then both of them will go down to 0. And in between, those variables will map to each other. So as the ADC reading gets bigger, the voltage is also higher. So here is another good point to pause the video, try out that example program, make sure you can see the ADC reading changing in the serial monitor, and then also try editing your code. You can just copy what I have on the screen here to print out the analog voltage. You can also try visualizing this with the serial plotter instead of the serial monitor. So if you click on that, that will open a separate window where you can again change, turn your potentiometer and you'll see a nice graph of the ADC reading going up and down as you turn the knob. Now, here is a programming challenge for you. In the previous video, you learned how to control the brightness of an LED using the analog write command. If you don't remember how to do that, you'll have to go back and watch that video. You can find the playlist linked in the description of this one. Try to edit your code so the brightness of the LED is controlled by the potentiometer reading. So you will have to use the analog read command to read the value from the potentiometer, which you should already have set up. But then you are going to need to use the analog write command to control the brightness of the LED. The challenge is that those two commands accept different ranges or will result in different ranges. So analog read will give you a number between 0 and 1023, but analog write only takes a number between 0 and 255. It is only an 8-bit binary number as opposed to the 10-bit binary number used by analog read. So you can't send analog write a value of 1,000 or it will result in strange and unexpected behavior. So you are going to have to try to figure out how to convert properly to use the analog write command. Again, I'm going to leave that as a challenge for now. We will pause the video and then I will explain it after the break. So I am going to do that by adding just two lines of code. First, I declare a new variable called brightness. I'm going to set brightness equal to the sensor value divided by four. That works because 1023 divided by four is 255.75. So technically that's slightly outside of the range of what analog write will take, but I have called brightness an integer so the 7.5 gets cut off. Remember, integer value variables cannot have decimals. They just get truncated. So that is actually going to give it a maximum value of 255. I can then use the analog write command to send the brightness value to my LED pin, which I have selected as pin 11. But remember, I could have selected any of the other PWM pins that have the squiggly symbol or tilde next to them. When you upload this program, or in the case of Tinkercad, start the simulation, you will then see that as I turn the potentiometer knob, the brightness of the LED is controlled by the position of the knob. The farther I turn the knob, the brighter it gets. And if I turn the knob all the way in the other direction, the LED will turn off. If I also open the serial monitor at the same time, you will see how those values correspond. So right now I'm reading zero volts, which gives an ADC reading of zero, and the LED's brightness is zero. If I turn the value all the way up, then my ADC reading is 1023 because of the voltage of five volts. And I am not printing it out right now, but the brightness value in that case would be 255, not 1023. 
there is one more convenient thing we're going to cover here, the Arduino map function. So if you have a hard time writing equations like this to convert one value to another range for a different variable, the map function is very convenient. What it does is let you assign a variable. So in this case, we're going to do int brightness again, and it lets you take another variable. In this case, that is our sensor value, and it will convert between the two ranges as long as you give it the range that you're coming from and the range you want to go to. So for example, our sensor value variable has a range between 0 and 1023, but we need to convert that to a range of 0 to 255 for the brightness variable since that is the range we need for analog write. One thing to be careful of, if you go check the documentation on the Arduino website, it does mention that the map function uses integer math, so will not generate fractions. So in our program, that works fine for replacing the brightness equation where we don't really care about the decimal place. It would not work to replace the equation we're using to define the voltage because we used a float for our voltage variable, and that variable does have decimal places. So we would lose a lot of precision if we truncated the decimals off of that variable. So again, the map function can be convenient, but you have to be careful how you use it. So now you know how to use the Arduino's analog read function. We demonstrated it with a potentiometer, but there are many other sensors that you might use with an Arduino that have an analog output. Since you can't measure their values with the digital pins, it's important to know how to use the analog pins. As you saw, it's also important to know how to convert the value from the analog read function to other ranges depending on what you need to do in your program. For more Arduino tutorials and lots of cool projects you can do with an Arduino, check out the links in the video description. For thousands of other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.